literary animal studies began when the question of animal agency arose in a survey course discussion of William Wordsworth's poem, Nutting. Animals abound in literature across all ages and cultures, but only rarely have they been the focal point of systematic literary study. Animals serve as a metaphor for the poetic imagination and voice the limits of human experience, and a figure like Wordsworth's squirrel gains value as dissembling the human and metaphorically speaking. These peculiar operations of agency present tremendous opportunities for recovering and interrogating the material and representational problems specific to animality. The textual politics of literary animals suggest a thoroughgoing critique, attuned to the traces of species and markings of potentials for different orders of agency beyond the human subject. Literary animal studies begins empirically to develop terms, methods, and concepts of species relations to intervene productively in a looming crisis of disciplinary ways of knowing. This movement is possible only through the formation of animal studies, an interdisciplinary field of inquiry that coalesces around questions of representation and agency that is, around the unnatural histories of species. Moving across disciplines, animal studies researchers are united by a commitment, not so much to common methods or politics, as to the broader goal of bringing the intellectual histories and values of species under scrutiny. Scholarship in this area proves especially helpful in highlighting the contact points of aesthetic and ethical systems, and it concerns more than problems with individuals' rights or groups' welfare. Animal knowledges become the stakes of moving from any given perspective or project to animal studies as a discursive formation. Literary history supports the formal lesson that animals emerged as significant figures in English literature only in terms of metaphor. Recent studies of this kind of literary animal challenge its operations, but not its underlying value, venturing that among British romantics, metaphoric for animals serve literary purposes, even as they model ways of thinking outside literary forms, for instance, in medicine and law. Shuk explores the concept of animality in literature and its impact on literary studies and disciplinary thought. It highlights the constitution of the subject, which is at stake in this discussion. Metaphor provides a strong defense for poetics in the service of anthropocentrism, but it also invokes other potentials as perpetually deferred. Some philosophers have begun to call attention to how species divide only through fluctuating convergences of representational forms. The problem of animals as written into the metaphysics of speech and subjectivity emerges most clearly through post-structuralist analysis of human animality and the ways in which animal studies gains legitimacy in literary circles with Jack Derrida's movement toward questions about the subject's inscription in the erasure of animal traces. Derrida rejects the distinction between animal and human language and finds potential for countering this resistance in companion animal bodies, such as a pet cat's possession of a point of view regarding me. Animality gains intellectual appeal for some literary critics as a repressed deconstructive element, implying that animal subjectivity remains significant only as an essentially negative force against which the human is asserted. However, the formal implications of 
Darwin's theory of the mutability of species for human animality trace a more specific historical trajectory in Margot Norris's account of why modernist writers and artists explicitly rejected metaphor in favor of the more plastic structures of narrative and visual media in their experiments with anti-representational forms that critique anthropocentrist aesthetics more coherently than they express human animality. Researchers have begun working around three interrelated imperatives for animal studies, with direct implications for literary critique. Mahew explores the concept of agency in literature, focusing on the role of animals in cultural production and their material and methodological consequences for literary scholarship. Animals are being reconceptualized as active participants in various cultural traditions, sparking claims about non-human markings in texts. Authors' participation in cultural traditions centered on animals, such as household pet keeping histories, agricultural employment, and blood sport hobbies bolsters speculation about the relation of biographical details to creative responsibility in representing animals. However, historical and poorly organized accounts make it difficult to determine the influences of particular animals on literary representation, controversial animal practices, and the systematic integration of animals in cultural productions of and against human subjects present a greater challenge as sources of effect in the politics of knowledge. Messy entanglements of human and animal agents become sedimented even in cultural practices without immediate ties to animals, compromising claims of scholars charged with per-animal sympathies that literary representations distort or oppress animal subjectivity. Positing animals as mechanisms of transcendence only exacerbates this problem. Such approaches to species risk a dangerous endgame for animal agency, emptying out the textual operations of species being and species becoming. The operations of human-animal relations, localized through textual production, lead to interrogation of the convergences of agency forms and values. Harriet Rithvo's History of Animals in Victorian England provides an early example of how to analyze animals as bearers of meaning and catalysts of social change. Post-structuralist aesthetic accounts of contemporary animal representation highlight the ways in which mechanisms of representation confront the singularity or closure of meaning, the forms that build in gaps, fissures, or ruptures, contrived metaphoric for breakdowns and other mismanaged animal representations, invite critique as unequivocal formal failures prompting queries about the inadequacies or shortcomings built into representational processes concerning animals. Early post-Darwinian experiments with voicing human animality might be said to continue through literary animal narratives that break signifier chains in ways that foreground or at times redress the historic paradox of the animal agent, as subsumed by literary forms. Animal acts signal ruptures to identity forms, in relation to anthropomorphizing traditions, that empty out the animal content, and other patterns, against which writers have struggled to represent animals, as non-human social agents, informed by Haraway's and others' theories of human, and non-human agency, as co-constitutive, studies that take a longer historical view, akin to Rithvos, 
further illuminate the unsettling ways in which animal representations pry apart forms of agency and the human subject. Vicky Hearns attempts to represent the responsiveness required of such relations in both poetry, in the absence, and prose. Adam's task illustrate the difference that makes a difference in companion species relationships. Literary studies can contribute to a broader understanding of porous species forms and help model knowledges and responsibilities attendant to life in the 21st century. However, this work will happen only if scholars forego the politics and privileges of knowledges, conceived in exclusively disciplinary terms.